Have you ever wondered why religious missionaries often approach Charles Darwin's theory of evolution with a hefty amount of skepticism? This question arises from a fundamental conflict between the belief in divine creation and the scientific theory of evolution. Imagine this. In one corner, we have religious doctrines asserting that humans were created in one fell swoop by a divine entity, a singular creator. This belief leaves no room for the gradual process of evolution. In the other corner, we have Charles Darwin and his groundbreaking theory of evolution, proposing that we humans are not the product of an immediate divine act, but rather the result of millions of years of evolution. This clash of perspectives isn't just a trivial disagreement, it's a profound conflict that goes to the heart of how we understand ourselves and our place in the grand tapestry of life. The concept of a divine creator crafting humans in their current form speaks to the idea of human exceptionalism, the belief that we are a unique creation, distinct from all other forms of life. On the other hand, the theory of evolution positions us as part of a vast interconnected web of life that has been evolving and diversifying for billions of years. It paints a picture of gradual change, of species adapting and evolving over time in response to their environment. It suggests that we humans are not an isolated act of creation, but part of an ongoing dynamic process of life's evolution. Yet, there's a fascinating twist in this tale. Over the years, despite the resistance to the idea of human evolution, Religious missionaries have increasingly accepted that animals and other life forms are products of evolution. They've acknowledged the compelling scientific evidence supporting the evolution of diverse species on Earth. Yet when it comes to humans, the skepticism remains. Despite the mounting scientific evidence, the theory of evolution was largely dismissed when it came to human existence. But what about the rest of life on Earth? That's a question we'll explore in the next chapter of our story. Over time, even the most steadfast religious missionaries began to accept one crucial part of Darwin's theory. A remarkable shift occurred as the very people who once vehemently opposed the concept of evolution began to embrace it, at least partially. But what brought about this change of heart? The story of acceptance is a tale of undeniable scientific evidence. As more and more research pointed towards evolution as the driving force, behind the diversity of life on Earth, it became increasingly difficult to ignore. The fossil record, for instance, presented a clear chronicle of changes in species over time. From the ancient trilobites to the dinosaurs and then to the mammals, evidence of gradual transformation was etched in stone. Then, there was the study of genetics. As scientists delved deeper into the DNA, the very blueprint of life, they discovered that all living creatures share a common genetic language. The genetic similarities between different species pointed to a common ancestry, further supporting Darwin's theory. Another compelling evidence came from the field of comparative anatomy. The similarities in the structure of different animals, like the bone structure in the wings of bats and the hands of humans, hinted at a shared evolutionary path. The mounting scientific evidence was simply too compelling to dismiss. As a result, many religious missionaries began to accept the theory of evolution as it applies to animals. They acknowledged that birds, fish, mammals and all other creatures have evolved over billions of years from simpler life forms. However, the acceptance of animal evolution did not translate into the acceptance of human evolution. For many, the idea that humans too have evolved from simpler life forms was a harder pill to swallow. While they could accept that a fish may have evolved into a bird over millions of years, they found it more challenging to accept that their own species was also a product of the same process. While the evolution of animals became more widely accepted, the question remained, what about us? What about humans? In 1952, an experiment took the scientific community by storm, challenging our understanding of the origins of life. In the midst of the 20th century, two ambitious scientists, Stanley Miller and Harold Urey, embarked on a journey to uncover the mysteries of life's inception. Their experiment was not conducted in the vast expanse of the universe, but within the confines of a laboratory where they aimed to reconstruct the primeval environment of Earth over four billion years ago. 
Picture a young Earth, a stark contrast to the blue and green planet we are familiar with today. It was a world of chaos and tumult, dominated by violent volcanoes spewing hydrogen sulfide gases into the atmosphere. The skies were filled with acid rain and tremendous bolts of lightning, an environment seemingly inhospitable to life. Yet, it was within these harsh conditions that Miller and Yuri believed the building blocks of life could have been formed. The duo set up a closed system, a miniaturized version of early Earth in their laboratory. They introduced water, methane, ammonia and hydrogen into the system, representing the ancient atmosphere. The water was heated to simulate the effect of the Earth's oceans, and an electric discharge unit was used to mimic the lightning storms that were prevalent during this era. Then they waited. After a week of continuous operation under these conditions, they discovered something remarkable. The clear solution had turned into a murky, reddish-brown soup. Upon further analysis, they found that this soup contained amino acids, the fundamental building blocks of life. The implications of this were profound. Miller and Yuri had demonstrated that under the conditions of early Earth, it was possible for simple organic compounds to form more complex molecules. This was a monumental leap in the debate over evolution, providing a plausible explanation for the chemical origins of life on Earth. Yet, the significance of the Miller-Yuri experiment extends beyond the confines of our planet. If such conditions were present on Earth four billion years ago, it's reasonable to assume that similar conditions could have existed on other planets within our galaxy or even beyond. Given that the Miller-Urey experiment is repeatable and isn't just a one-off occurrence, it opens up the possibility that life, in some form, could be thriving in the vast expanses of the universe. The results of the Miller and Urey experiment were nothing short of astonishing. But what do they mean for the possibility of life beyond Earth? This is a question that continues to tantalize scientists and stargazers alike. As we delve deeper into the cosmos, the Miller-Urey experiment serves as a reminder of the incredible potential for life to emerge amidst chaos and the infinite possibilities that lie within the universe. The conditions of Earth four billion years ago are not unique to our planet. They can be found in many corners of our vast universe. Imagine the world four billion years ago, a world filled with volcanoes, hydrogen sulfide gases, acid rain and massive lightning, a world inhospitable to life as we know it. Yet it was from these extreme conditions that the building blocks of life were formed. This is not a scene from a science fiction novel. This is the world Miller and Yuri sought to recreate in their groundbreaking experiment in 1952. Their aim was to investigate the possibility of forming complex units of life, such as amino acids, under the conditions that existed on Earth billions of years ago. The results were astonishing. Against all odds, they succeeded. Now, let's take this a step further. If it's possible for life to emerge from such harsh conditions on Earth, could the same process occur elsewhere in the universe? The universe is vast. It is filled with countless planets and galaxies. Many of these celestial bodies share similar conditions to those of Earth four billion years ago. They too are filled with volcanoes and gases, with acid rain and lightning. The implications of the Miller and Yuri experiment stretch far beyond our own planet. If the building blocks of life could be formed under such extreme conditions here on Earth, then surely they could also form under similar conditions elsewhere in the universe. But this is not just a theoretical proposition. Many scientists are actively searching for signs of life beyond Earth. They are scouring the universe, looking for planets with conditions similar to those of Earth four billion years ago. They are looking for the building blocks of life. They are looking for proof that we are not alone. The possibility of life beyond Earth is a tantalizing prospect. It forces us to expand our perspective, to consider the universe not just as a vast, empty space, but as a potential cradle for life. But it all comes back to one fundamental question. Do we believe in evolution? Today we've journeyed from the initial skepticism of religious missionaries towards evolution to the acceptance of animal evolution and all the way to the groundbreaking Miller and Urey experiment. We've delved into the depths of skepticism, surfacing with the acceptance of evolution in the animal kingdom. 
We've moved from the pages of religious texts to the laboratories of Miller and Urey, observing the genesis of life in a controlled environment. This experiment, a testament to the power of science, has opened doors to the possibility of life beyond our own planet. Remember, the conditions that prevailed on Earth four billion years ago are mirrored in numerous corners of the universe. The Miller and Urey experiment, repeatable and consistent, hints at the likelihood of life thriving in the vast expanse of the cosmos. The universe is vast and the possibilities are endless. What do you believe? Subscribe to the channel for more video and please give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this.